Jumping all the way into chapter 12 for this one, one lesson, 12.1, and we're talking about valid and invalid arguments. And just, just so we're clear, we're talking about the form of the argument. So we're talking about the form of the argument, not whether or not the things that we're talking about are true or false. So we want to know if, if we put together an argument in a specific way, is that, a, is that a, can, we, can we figure anything out from the way we're arguing? So let's, uh, let's start with our, our opener, the, the conditional that we had from our opener yesterday, and we're going to work with that over and over with these arguments. So we said yesterday, and this is just going to be our generic, our generic conditional statement. If you are a math teacher, then you know algebra. And this was the one we used a lot, we talked about yesterday, so we're going to use that to talk about our valid and invalid forms of argument. So let's talk about the valid forms first. Talk. We have two types of valid arguments. Our first one. <coughs> So any conditional statement. Our argument is P is true, so Q is true. That's our argument. So our example here would be, we know that if you are a math teacher, then you know algebra. So the first part is true. You are a math teacher, and we're going to conclude you know algebra. That is a valid argument. So we have this conditional statement. If you are a math teacher, then you know algebra. You know the first part is true. You're a math teacher, then you know algebra. So this is just, just another way of using our conditional statement. We know the first part's true, so the second part has to be true. So this is a valid way of making an argument. This is what we did on our college trip project. This is what we're going to do a lot in, in the class. This is how we figure things out about geometry. You know something's true, something else has to be true. If that other thing is true, then a third thing has to be true, and we keep going. That's our logical chain from yesterday. So that's, that's our first form of, first valid form of argument. Any questions on that one? All right, let's look at our second type of valid argument. We're given a conditional statement, if P then Q, and our argument is Our argument is Q is false so P is false
So let's think back to our, our conditional statement. If you are a math teacher, then you know algebra. We're saying the second part is false. You don't know algebra. And we're concluding, then you are not a math teacher. Is that a valid argument? If you don't know algebra, then you are not a math teacher. If someone if someone doesn't know algebra, could they be a math teacher? Yeah. Well, you no. we, we talked about it yesterday. You would hope that when they went to school and all that kind of thing, that and they had they took all kinds of tests to become a math teacher, that that they know algebra. So if you don't know algebra, then you can't be a math teacher. So this is a valid form of argument. Let's look at let's look at another example of this. If you get an A on your test, I will give you candy. Um, or let's see, not, let's see, let's do it another way. If you get an A, I will give you ten dollars. I didn't give you ten dollars. That then you did, and I'm going to conclude that you did not get an A. Is that going to be true? If you get an A, I give you $10. I didn't give you $10, so that means you didn't get an A. Or else I'm a liar. So we're assuming that I'm telling the truth. I say, if you get an A, then I give you $10. I don't give you $10. We can conclude that you did not get an A. So that, that is a valid form of argument. The second part is false. The first part has to be false also. So that's our second valid argument. So we have two valid forms of argument. Now we're going to look at invalid arguments. And we're talking about the form of the argument, not whether the things we're talking about are necessarily true or false. We have two of these. Our first one, we're given some conditional statement, if P then Q, we're going to say our argument is, is Q is true. So P is true. We're saying the second part is true, and we're going to argue that the first part has to be true. So let's go back to our, our generic conditional statement. If you are a math teacher, then you know algebra. This form of argument says the second part is true. You know algebra. Therefore, you are a math teacher. Is that true? That would be invalid. What? How did we, yesterday we talked about this, how did we show that this was invalid? If you know algebra, then you are a math teacher. The counterexample. What was our counterexample to that? That all of you guys, if that were true, all of you would be math teachers because you all know algebra. At least to an extent. So you guys know algebra. What this would be arguing is that you are math teachers. So this is an invalid argument. Let's look at another example of this one. Um, if you get an A on a test, then you have candy. You get candy. What this argument is saying that is that you have candy, therefore you got an A on the test. Is getting an A on the test the only reason you could have candy? It could be Halloween, right? So there are lots of reasons that you could have candy, not just because you got an A on a test. So if I saw you walking around with candy, I could not necessarily conclude that you got an A on your test, because there are lots of reasons you could have candy. It could be Halloween. You could save it up. You could have a big bag in, uh, in your drawer in your file cabinet. So this would, this would be an invalid argument. 
Our second form of invalid argument. We're given some conditional statement. If P, then Q. And we're going to make our argument um, P is not true, our argument. P is not true. So Q is not true. So let's look at this one. So go back to our generic our generic conditional statement. We know that if you are a math teacher, then you know algebra. <clears throat> We're saying the first part's not true. You are not a math teacher. Therefore, you do not know algebra. Is that necessarily true? All of you guys are not math teachers. So I'm going to say, then none of you know algebra. Is that true? No. So this would be an invalid type of argument. Let's look at another example of this one. If you oversleep, then you are running late. You did not oversleep, therefore you are not running late. Is that necessarily true? There are lots of reasons you could be running late, right? You could have decided to watch the regular show before school. Um, my son likes the regular show. I think it's kind of funny. I like Muscle Man. There was one the other day where Muscle Man was, where he lost his memory, and he was teaching quantum mechanics at college. <laughs> and I thought that one was very funny. <clears throat> Um, let's see. So, so this is this is going to be a, an invalid form of argument. If the first part is not true, we cannot necessarily conclude that the second part is not true. So, this is our second form of invalid argument. Questions on our argument forms? All right. There's one other thing that we need to talk about. This is called what called false premises. And premises premises are just the facts that we start with. So it's just, it's just what we're starting our argument with. False premises means that the, the idea is if, if we start with something that's false, we don't know whether or not we'll, we'll get the right answer. Right. We don't know if our conclusion, if our answer is going to be right. So just like, like Preston said, if we start with something false, we don't know if we get the right answer. So when we're talking about arguments, we, we just to use a little fancier words, we say we don't know if our conclusion is true. So let me give you an example of a false premises. Um, all men drive trucks. So I'm going to conclude then that Mr. Beamer drives a truck. Is it necessarily true that all men drive trucks? No. So you cannot, you can't use that to conclude that some man that you know drives a truck because that's a, it's false premises. 
We're starting with something that's that's not necessarily true. Sure, you could say, no, Mr. Beamer doesn't drive a truck. Mr. Beamer drives a station wagon. A Su I have a Subaru Legacy, um, which is a modern version of a station wagon. Right? Um, they use false premises use use false premises a lot in advertising. If you are a, a stylish person, then you use this particular kind of soap. Um, so, and that's how they try to sell you soap. If you're, if you're a studly guy, then you're going to drive a, a pickup truck. Then they try to sell you a pickup truck because they say studly guys drive pickup trucks. Um, if, you are, uh, if you are a beautiful person, then you use this particular kind of product in your hair. So that, that, that's a, a lot of advertising is, is kind of built on this, this idea that they start with something that's not necessarily true and try to get you to, to believe it so you hand your money over to them. Um, so we have two, forms of val two valid forms of arguments, two invalid forms of arguments, and we also have this idea of false premises, starting with something that's not necessarily true. Um, and our homework tonight is just going to be looking at looking at different arguments and deciding is it valid or is it invalid. In the book, they give names to the different kinds of arguments. I'm not worried about the names. I'm not going to have you memorize those names. So it, the problems will say, tell if it's valid or invalid and give it its traditional name. Don't worry about the name. All I want you to do is say, is it a valid argument? Is it an invalid argument? Okay. Any questions? All right.